and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Today I'm looking at some 90 pressed glass jewellery we made. With these, we pressed some glass together and then cut it up into various different shapes and made it into jewellery. The great thing about this is it means your glass is quite thin, so rather than your jewellery being chunky and big, it's much more refined and elegant, which I really like for jewellery. We also slumped all of these pieces, or most of these pieces, to create a bit of movement because fused glass jewellery can be fairly um, single dimensional and this gives the, all the pieces a feeling of dimension to them because of the slump we've done on them. So today I'm going to show you how to make these. So this product I'm doing using two layers of glass and it's just to have a kind of different top. They're two mil and they will react so there might be a little bit of a line between them that I like but because they're squashed I don't know quite how it's going to look. And then I'm just going to decorate the top there's some marini that will be pressed into the glass. I'm going to choose some of these. I'm going to choose some ivy leaves. And I'm going to kind of build it up as a sort of floral piece. And I'll show you how I'm building it and how it looks when it's finished. This one is done and ready to go in the kiln. And I'm now just going to do one with some frit. I've put some XL marini down. These are some new mandalas we've made. And then I'm going to put a bit of frit on the bottom. Once I put it down, I'll make sure I clean it off the actual mandalas so then they don't have any frit on them. I put opaline around the mandalas and also put some more neo lavender and a very small amount of expensive cranberry pink on top. Um, I wanted a strong colour like cranberry that saturates and is really going to show up when the this whole piece is pressed together. So these two will now go in the kiln, they'll be pressed and we can see what they look like when they come out. So here they are out of the kiln. I haven't washed them or anything because I'm going to take them straight to the sandblaster and I don't want to take wet stuff to the sandblaster. If I didn't have a sandblaster, I would just hand pad, I'd give them a wash and hand pad um, any of the res residue off the back. Um, so you can do that instead. Um, so I'm going to do that now and then have a look and think about how to cut them up into jewellery shapes. So we realised we forgot to film the glass when it came out of the kiln, all nicely pressed. We were so excited with how lovely it looked, we cut it up without showing it to you. Damn! So effectively we took the glass out of the kiln and it was really pretty. And then we cleaned it up, so I sandblasted it because I have a sandblaster, but you can use a diamond pad with some water and just carefully clean it up. Um, or just scrub it or soak it in vinegar and clean it up like that. And once we had it nicely cleaned, then we had a look. And I've got this slab of glass that I was sort of thinking about for another project. Um, and you know, got a slab of glass, and then I want to think about what shapes. Now, you can get these um, things, and you can get ones with even better shapes. I can only find my hexagon one at the moment. And you can think about, oh, you can put it around. You probably don't want to go right dead in the middle. You maybe want to start at the edge and go, oh, that's quite, ooh, that's quite nice. I've got a bit of a twisty cane there, a little bit of um, a little bit of flower, and I quite like that shape. And then actually over here, I could fit in another one. So that's one way, or you can just go, oh, I want sort of a shape like this here, using up this and this bit of twisty cane. So this is what you kind of want to look at your, your, you know, your slab of glass and think whether, it, you know, um, whichever technique, this is going to be a slot of video for, um, for about three of our videos because we forgot to do it for three, sorry. Um, so you want to look at the piece of glass and go, where do I want my jewellery? Do I want it on a straight? Do I want it a bias? Do I want it straight on? How do I want it to look? Once you've drawn the pieces on, then you need to cut it. Now, for the press glass, we tried scoring it and cutting it, and that really didn't work that well. I'm afraid it just seemed to break off at angles. It might be that mine wasn't annealed. In your schedule, I have put an anneal in, which hopefully might help it, and you can try and score it and cut it, and so it might be easier. Um, if not, the best results we had were on the Taurus saw, or you can try on another saw. Um, try on, we tried on the tiles saw as well, but even that I found they, it broke up a lot. The Taurus saw was best. But if you don't have a Taurus saw, you can just score and break it into random shapes. I then ground those random shapes. The one that broke apart and didn't really work well, we then you know, worked into shapes. We worked into whatever shape we had available there and made them into really nice jewellery. So that's the idea, you're going to clean it up, decide what shapes you want, or just break it up randomly and use it and get your shapes and then you can work out how you can make those into different pieces of jewellery. So now we've shaped these into the shape we want with these ones, um, I wanted to think about what I wanted to turn them into and I decided on a necklace. Now, um, 
I decided to make some templates of the pieces and working out where I wanted to join them. Did I want to join have two rings? Did I want to have one ring? Now, the issue is I don't want to do too many of these because actually the more you open and close these rings, the less they can really be used again because they just they bend out of shape. So you want to kind of really open and close them a bit. So I might keep these as um, ones to sort of do this with in the future. But I thought this was quite a good technique. You can also see that the um, if you're too if the ring's too small and your hole is too far from the edge of the piece, you're going to it's going to pull the pieces together. Um, I've got some slightly bigger rings. This one's a slightly bigger ring. You see the two different sizes. These are more expensive because they're um, solid silver, and these are you know cheaper silver plated ones. Um, but I think I'm going to have to use the more expensive solid silver ones here. Now I was thinking, I was drawing out and thinking, oh maybe I'll put them at the top, but then I realised that the bits that are going to join to the chain would then be here and it would make the whole necklace a bit, um, it would be like this, and actually I want the necklace like this. So then if I'm going to put the, these pieces here, I'm going to lay it back down, these pieces in the middle, it would look weird to have the end bits here and then the other bits at the top which made me decide that actually I'm going to put them all in the middle. So then I'm just sort of put a dot and think about exactly where I want to drill so that I'm drilling and I'm making them slightly bigger but I want to drill as close to the edge of the glass anyway as I can with being careful not to obviously um, mess it up and you know, drill through the edge of the glass. So those are kind of my dots for the necklace and I can drill those. I've got some earrings that I made from, I sort of had a piece like this and I cut it in half and I quite like that then, you know, they're not symmetrical. I think that that works quite well. Um, and I've just drilled holes, I've got some ba um, uh, findings that I'm going to use for those. So we're going to drill this and then we're going to get them into the kiln with the other ones that we pressed as well to slump. The other ones we pressed are, I th think they're, we've cut them out. We're making this into a pendant and a pair of earrings. And then we have a separate pendant that we're also going to drill in sort of um, like this and, and have it together as sort of three pieces so that they kind of chain together and then we've got two we cut one in half to make two earrings now I know it's sort of weird that you know we press this glass and we put a load of opal line around but actually the opal line makes this really kind of beautiful translucent kind of feeling to the whole piece that I really love um, I'm not sure if I'm saying opal line opaline how to say it properly um, but so th that's that so we're going to drill the rest of this and then we'll set up for slumping and have a look how it looks to kind of to give a slightly bit of movement to the glass um, uh, and also I've ground these so guys just one last thing um, I'm lucky I have equipment and I can grind so I've literally ground all the edges including the flat sides on a 400 grit which gives you a kind of really lovely satiny smooth finish now this one you can actually see we've got a bit of kind of texture still left on it um, where probably my kiln shelf wasn't as smooth as possible this is why you want really smooth kiln shelves so I might go and grind that a bit further. I also want to show you the backs of these. So the backs have got the blue glass on them, but they're really pretty as well. I mean, they're not ugly. I sometimes feel that the backs of fused um, glass jewelry can be really ugly. Whereas I think these are pretty, and these are completely double-sided. So if you've got a necklace on, and it swings and it turns, it looks pretty either way, which is really what I love about this technique, is it looks really pretty even if it swings or whatever or your earring turns they still look great so I love that so we're going to get these drilled get them set up in the kiln to slump and we'll show you how it looks so now these are all cold worked and drilled I want to put them in the kiln and slump them I've also because I've um, ground them on the grinder they do have a, a matte finish which at the moment um, will not seal uh, is not sealed but and slumping them will seal that matte finish so um, with these I just want them to kind of slump in a little bit so I've kind of just made out of um, six mil fibre paper these forms 
They're going to sit in them like this and they'll just slump round them a bit. I'm not looking for an enormous movement. I just want a little bit of movement so they're a little bit more 3D than, um, than um, 1D. So for something like this, I'm going to slump it over a few bits of fibre paper, just like this, and it will give it a kind of a, um, a little organic twist. I've also got these are called serpentine, mil, um, uh, serpentine formers. You can get them in small and large. This is the larger ones. The larger ones I might slump a piece over lengthways to give it a little turn, although that's probably not going to slump very much. Or I can slump over these smaller ones lengthways. Or I can slump over this way and it will give it a bend. So I'm going to have a look at those and, and set them up and put them in the kiln to slump in various different ways. So it's always interesting how things come out of the slump. Um, this piece I think is going to be maybe a little bit tricky to wear, but we will see. Um, maybe you could have even, you know, we could have put a hole in it and, and then threaded it and it could be a piece that goes this way. Um, so there's always thinking about what it's going to be used for um, when you cut the shape and then maybe even adapting it afterwards. Originally we cut this and it was a, a larger piece and then I cut it in half and made it into two earrings. I think this has worked incredibly well. I think it's so pretty. I don't know whether you can get it on the camera but you can sort of see down it and see the blue behind. Even if you look behind it looks great. I think the slumping worked really well and the hoops holding it together. It's become a really elegant set of jewellery that I would happily wear myself and feel that you know I can sell for a really decent amount of money. Um, these ones are kind of cool and funky. They're, you know, hang this way, but the nice thing is they turn and the backs look as nice as the fronts. Um, it was quite hard to sort of, um, these are sort of drilled so it was easy. You just, in the, when you're drilling them, hold them this way and drill. But when gluing some of the other bits, we sort of had to hold them, uh, we stuck them down with sellotape and then glued them on so we had a kind of flat base to put the bale on and the bale, the, the stud earring on. So it was really interesting kind of seeing what shapes we got out of this after we cut it up and then how to utilise those shapes best. I think these are incredibly pretty. I mean, we, these will go on sale in the next week or so. The um, the marini and um, they are just so beautiful to use and I think with the open line glass it just really adds a beautiful colour to these pieces. As I'm also going to put this jewellery on the website to sell. I would really love it if people bought some pieces. It helps us fund the YouTube videos, helps us get a bit more money in so that we can afford to make more videos and show you guys more and it also means you get to own a bit of YouTube history and a bit of Tabitha's Glass Emporium and my art. So these will go on, we'll probably put them on the Facebook page with prices and kind of people can say what they'd like if they'd like to buy something. The nice thing about jewellery is shipping won't cost that much, so it's kind of a good thing if you're looking for a present for someone. So look out for that in the next sort of couple of weeks. Um, probably it'll be more likely the beginning of next month, uh, which it will be, if you're watching this in, in a few months' time, it will be the beginning of June 2022. So if you want to you know, keep an eye out, maybe you'd feel like buying some jewellery, that would be great. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's really inspired you. I think this is such a clever idea and I know I'm slightly blowing my own trumpet here but I think pressing glass makes great jewellery. I think slumping it gives something completely new dimension to jewellery that you know most other fusers out there aren't doing and so gives your work a really something spectacular. Um, again I know that I'm using a lot of equipment to um, cut and then I ground, you know, I'm a big fan of grinding things flat and really grinding the edge of my jewellery. But, you know, as I say, you can still use this technique and cut it on a torus or cut it using a cutter. You know, some of our stuff didn't cut well when we were cutting up the press stuff, but we used every little bit of it up to make little bits of jewellery. Um, so it's always usable, it's just you using your imagination to think, oh, this could be a ring, this could be an earring, this could be a pendant. So it's sort of thinking what you could make out of all the little bits, which is great. That means you're not wasting any glass, great for the environment, great for your pocket. Um, and I think this makes spectacular pieces. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please join our Facebook group. We have a group where you can share your work. Love to see what you do with this idea. It's called Tabitha's Glass Emporium. Um, we've got our Facebook page. Like that, um, turn on notifications. You'll hear everything that's going on. Subscribe to our Facebook um, YouTube channel. 
Um, and you'll also get notifications about new videos um, on our website, Tabitha's Glass Emporium. You can get on, you know, sign up for our newsletter and you'll get a kind of newsletter once a week with everything that's going on here, whether it be new products, new videos, all of that. Um, so please keep in touch with us and we look forward to seeing you next time.